You can be a feminist. You could buy a pussy hat if you left today, and I wouldn't mind. I've never had an issue with people that are feminists. I have an issue when people tell me that I now have to be a feminist or that it's complete when I say that I, I think it's harmful to keep telling men that masculinity is wrong. Masculinity is a component of being a man. I think a society needs and thrives on strong men. There's never been a society without strong men. There's never been a society without strong men. And I, because I support that, you're, you're upset and you're calling bull****. What's wrong with that? What's wrong with strong men? Why does that make you upset? Yo, what's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Hope all's good wherever you are. Before we get to the video, I just want to say a big thank you to all of you who have subscribed lately, commented, liked the videos. I do read all my comments. I might not respond to all of them because as the channel's growing, it becomes harder and harder to keep track. But, but I do my best, and you guys are awesome in the comments section. I learn a lot from you guys. I am not a poli-sci guy. I am a finance guy by nature. So I love reading the comments because you guys often change my mind, and you have some funny jokes. That's all I want to say now. In today's video, we're going to watch Candace Owens, Charlie Kirk. This was at a TPUSA event in the UK. Let's get into it. <clears throat> maybe before was a bit of a spontaneous outburst, and maybe not the best way to address my objections to what you were saying i'll admit but i just so deeply object to a lot of what you're saying but at the root i feel like there's a clear misunderstanding about the the core values of feminism you're saying that it's it's bitter women or that that it's not allowing men to be men anymore or demonizing masculinity i just I really don't agree with. I don't think there's any value in in kind of glorifying toxic masculinity that that we have now, with with making it seem as though being being a violent man or or anything like that is 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 appropriate. I, I think it's really damaging. Would you be able to phrase it as a question? Sorry for the panel. Oh, uh, <laughs> okay. A couple, okay. I can say a couple of things back and we can have a discussion about this. So um, first and foremost, you started by saying, I feel like it's really important that we know what you think like, because a, a big problem is that people are thinking or are, are, are feeling and they're not really thinking anymore. Secondly, you brought up tax, toxic masculinity. I believe toxic masculinity exists, but it exists inside of radicalized feminists, right? Um, where they're thinking that they should be able to own and control society because they're marching in the street with pussy hats um, and, and saying that they demand justice is for a free and fair election like they did with Donald J. Trump. I don't like this trend where, you're, where we're trying to turn men, and, and you call it, this, masculinity is, is masculinity. I like masculinity. Masculinity is actually the one thing that saved me in life. I was grateful to have my grandfather who was the strongest example of what it means to be a man, right? And because of that, having that structure, it actually saved me because he taught me personal responsibility. He taught me to have a relationship with God, right? And yes, he's a, he's a man's man. He did everything with his hands. He worked on a sharecropping farm from the time he was five years old. Today, that archetype of what a man is, is being taught that, that there's something wrong with it that there's something that's implicitly violent about being a man and that's wrong and, and it's, it's and I think the people that are harmed the most by it by the way are women women are harmed the most when you break down men and strong fathers we are the ones that suffer the most and also can I just say that you know men men commit suicide at faster rates than women women actually live longer than men um, most men are actually in prison and most men um, more than women are homeless so Women graduate more in, in, yeah, in, from more, college. More women in, in what way are we suffering? What statistic do you feel that women are suffering and, and men aren't? Because there sh might be a meninist. There might need to be a meninism movement. You have a female prime minister. I would just say, I mean, there's a lot of things to address there. But to begin with, what you say about having a strong uh, grandfather, a male figure, if you're saying that you've internalized these things, these messages that he taught you, then then surely there's nothing inherently masculine about about those those qualities i mean i don't understand how you're defining masculinity i don't understand how you you're defining it yeah why don't you, yeah, why don't you define it so i would say masculinity now obviously just being a social construct literally nothing more than a set of expectations that are placed on someone so then how can you call it if it's a social construct how can you call it toxic because social constructs can be toxic if, if, if you if have a patriarchal society that is sending a message that men need to be dominant or they need to be I know you don't like the word violent, but I think there's something violent about it. Uh, about um, masculinity? No, uh, about, about the sort of masculinity that, 
that we have now, this this toxic... What, what makes, sort? What makes that a construct, though? In order for something to be a construct, it has to begin as a norm, which a majority amount of people follow. A majority it doesn't. Of if, people you have, if you have a have patriarchal to, society that is sending messages that men need to possess certain qualities, and I believe the qualities that they're, that they're suggesting should be adopted are... are uh, bad. But Which quality? Like I just need to know what exactly you've seen when you've said that is an example of toxic masculinity. I think um, men feeling that they need to dominate spaces physically and speaking over women, <laughs> interrupting women, belittling yeah, them. Yeah. Do you see how good I'm being? I, I mean, you can. So, uh, if just a quick, just a, it's just a question. So, uh, you just said in, when men interrupt and dominate spaces, were you a toxic feminist when you interrupted me when I was on stage? No, I was interrupting something. I'm just asking. That I fundamentally don't believe it. But I'm, I'm just asking because you're saying that somebody interrupting someone is now a symbol of toxic masculinity. You just interrupted me on stage. So, are you a toxic I wasn't feminist? I was interrupting you because I didn't. You went bullshit. Yeah, because you were talking bullshit. bullshit. Because you were talking bullshit. I didn't interrupt you because you're a woman. I interrupted you because I didn't maybe. believe what, I'm sa what you were saying. It's not that I didn't believe but what you were saying. But maybe that's what men do sometimes? Is it possible that men sometimes you, interrupt you, because they disagree with what women are saying and not because they're to toxic masculinity in the air? Like, do you get what I'm saying? Is that you're coming up with terms and sometimes people just interrupt. I'm fine with the fact that you're interrupting me. I, it happens all the time and I'm not holding that against you. I'm just using it to prove a point that you've created an entire concept around when men interrupt women, but you literally just interrupted me and you don't identify as yourself as a toxic feminist. No, because I interrupted you on the basis that I didn't agree with the politics you're espousing, both of you. Well, maybe men not are just disagree with what, what you're, you're saying. saying. Because you're a woman. The, the fact that you're a woman is completely irrelevant to me. But, but maybe it's irrelevant to men as well when, they're in, when they interrupt people. That's men interrupt other men, men interrupt that's women. Not the case. We're There's society. a culture of men's voices being valued more than women. How, what so is your metric for give this? Give us one piece of data. Yeah, one. like a data. Any, any piece of data. You can't just say that there's a culture of men interrupting women. You, what, what's, your da what's your data point well, for this? Any kind of interpretivist data where you're looking. Looking at, at interactions, at dynamics, you can see. I mean, what do you want me to say? Like a, like a, a fact? Yeah. <laughs> any fact? Any kind of. How, how about the stuff on the news? A, a recent huge cultural example, maybe? So can, I, can I ask a question? Do you think we live in a patriarchy? Yes. Why do women live longer than men? Why are men more likely to commit suicide? Why do women compose 50 you, plus percent of college Why do we control 89 percent of the of, of the spending power within households if men are the ones that are going out and, and making all of the money, because as we like to say? Because women have the sole responsibility of caring for the house and the children. So, so it's a patriarchy working. that allows women a lot of responsibility within a household, within a certain sphere, not not a powerful one. The household is then, not. Then why a are majority sphere. of business startups women? Majority of master's degrees so, and majority of doctor's also, degrees can in I the say, states. The thing about women living longer. Married women live the least long. Unmarried women live longest because they do not have the responsibilities, the emotional labor of being. Marriage is man. emotional labor. Pardon? Marriage is emotional labor for women. And that's. That's, that's a great point. <laughs> what, no, no, because, because the way that women uh, support men, like. It's a what huge part. We live in a they patriarchy. support each other. I'm saying, no, they don't. No, they don't. I'm talking But so about this is sort of, I appreciate the discussion that we're having. This is, you're such a perfect reason for why I, why I just, I could emotion. never be a feminist. No because facts. everything that you're, I just couldn't. I, it's like, you don't really know why you're calling it toxic. You did the no, exact I same do. thing, I but you decided exactly that when men interrupt, it it's because you're a woman. But you decided no, that when it's you not. interrupt, it's just because you had a differing you opinion. Me for one example. I know, I know, I know. And then you and say I stuff about the marriage and breakdown as an emotional labor. There are women, just so you know, that aspire to get married and have children and stay at home and raise good okay. children. And I that's agree. okay. So, but why are you not making it seem like that puts us in a position that's less than man? Create, that's, want to create a society? Be the, peop, the person that raises every individual that's in society. Feminism has made it seem like there's something wrong with being a mother, that there's something wrong with being a wife. And everything that you just said is that. You have. It's not emotional labor. I, I want to have children. I want to raise my children. I don't want to. I don't want to be the CEO of a company and 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 not have a husband. And that's not what I aspire to. And that's why feminism is having a hard time with a lot of women who are realizing that when they give up everything that they naturally want in life to be a feminist, they end up miserable and alone. No, I I'm not. No, I'm not. Please no, don't tell me that I'm sitting here because I'm, I'm, I'm standing. I'm, I'm, st I'm sitting here because I worked you'll, hard. You'll be I was next. personally responsible. <laughs> I'm not sitting here because of feminism. No, I, I am not sitting here because of any feminist. Well, trust me. So can I? 
Can I ask? Yeah, it, am I, is, can a man? Yeah, ask but a feminism question? is supposed to be about choice, and what radical feminism <laughs> is actually doing is taking away that choice and making it's women feel not. bad it's about wanting to maybe be the traditional um, view of what a woman is. There's nothing wrong with having a choice to do both. I don't really understand your point. No, I agree. Feminism isn't isn't trying to destroy the family. Women can happily be mothers, and they can. You just said it's emotional wives. labor to be married. It is in some way. There is an imbalance where men. It's are going not. I don't feel that way. So does that make which one of us is less of a woman? We have different opinions. What do you mean, which of us is less of a woman? You're saying that it is, and I'm saying that it's not. We have a differing opinion, and the reason why I don't like feminism is because it basically tells us that we have to feel this way, no, that we doesn't. have to feel no, bitter towards men, it's towards husbands, so towards marriage, towards children, choices. and that's why I'm trying to let you know the feminist movement is considered very radicalized because there are many women, especially conservative women, who just don't feel that way. We don't feel burdened by children and marriage. Can I give you some facts, though, to support this? No? You don't want to hear from a man? Okay. <laughs> Wait, you see how just things get really dangerous and you start to generalize men and women all of a sudden, like you did? I just wanted to continue the conversation that I was okay, having Okay, you can talk Candace. to Candace. Go ahead. You jump I'll talk, in we'll talk about facts, facts later. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. I, under I understand that, that some women want a family and they want to be mothers. I completely respect that. But all feminism is doing is telling you that you do have a choice. And I don't believe radical feminism is pushing women into, into hating the family. It's just suggesting that that maybe this doesn't have to be your lot. And some women have internalized values that make them think that this is what they want when, when really they might not. So I, mean, I really do sure. want a husband and children one day. Okay, so, but but what I'm saying to you is that. the reason why I don't like feminism is because feminists think feminism is mandatory. Mm -hmm. The second you find out that a girl doesn't identify as a feminist, you're, you're up here and you're asking a bunch of questions. I don't like the feminist movement. I think it's become very toxic and very hostile towards men. If you believed in the equality that men and that women should be able to think whatever we wanted, you wouldn't be debating me right now you'd say well more power to you because you'd be a true feminist but you're not I you're trying to you're belittling other women i'm not, not belittling them I'm I'm not you're allowed to be a feminist i'm not telling you 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 don't you can be a feminist you could buy a pussy hat if you left today and i wouldn't mind i've never had an issue with people that are feminists i have an issue when people tell me that i now have to be a feminist or that it's complete bullshit when i say that i i think it's harmful to keep telling men that masculinity is wrong Masculinity is a component of being a man. I think a society needs and thrives on strong men. There's never been a society without strong men. There's never been a society without strong men. And I, because I support that, you're, you're upset and you're calling bullshit. What's wrong with that? What's wrong with strong men? Why does that make you upset? I just think that the values, you referenced the Gillette advert. All it was saying was, the message was fundamentally just, just Stop being violent. Just no, it no, it wasn't. <laughs> no, it, in no, your view, little it, toddlers, there were, there were boys do, will be boys. Boys tend to be reckless. They tend to punch each other and wrestle each other. That's a healthy, necessary part of the child development process. Trying to demonize that in the parental guidelines that Gillette was trying to have in a 30-second to a minute ad is toxic feminism is toxic attacking feminism. toxic masculinity. So let me give you some examples, super quick. So you say that's not what feminism wants. The predominant viewpoint in the university now in the States and the UK is an anti-male posture, whether it be papers that literally say abolish men, whether it be books that say the problem with men, you're looking at me funny, the Huffington Post publishes at least a weekly piece that says that men should have a less powerful Cancel role in society. Cancel white men. Cancel white men is a common theme. The, the Me Too movement... Oh, so you agree with it? Okay. They have the men have done, wait, wait, done a lot historically. What you just said? Won every single war, every freedom that we have can in society is because of said? men. I said it's because white men have historically done so much shit. They're just asking so you, you to stop for So you do agree with the anti-male posture. So your no, true I radical don't. feminism comes out after ten minutes of cross-examination. Before you said I have no problem with men. Now you now said it's because white do. men have done a lot of shit. Yeah, now we get to revealing who you really yes, are, but which that is, is what hateful, feminism is. angry person. They just hate men. There is no other no, platform. They don't, they don't hate men. They're just, you just there's said, no problem. There is no problem with, with, with analyzing the actions of men in history and condemning them. You mean like what about all the good ones? What about all the good ones? Freedom. So that, that, that's wrong. We can't do that. Like defeating the Nazis? Oh, people, men who had adventures, anything that men have invented, we can't, we can't use anymore. Slavery so the, wasn't the, ended in America because uh, no, women were fighting. Negatives. It's complete hyperbole. What about all of the good? What about all, all the good things? Everything that we have in society, every war that was fought and won was because of men. Do you ever think Half about the that? Wars unnecessary anyway. I mean, wars but they have fought though. and now we're spiraling. Yeah, now we're spiraling. But they have fought and fought. So what they won was that they started unnecessarily. Yeah, women have never started wars, but you know, wars have never been fought over women in this country.
That never happened, Henry VIII. <laughs> right? What's the point? Because is he was an adulterer. I mean, that's a terrible example. Well, do you think that, that, that women, let me ask you a question. Heir, do you think women can do, have example. done anything wrong or that women can do anything wrong? Like, would you be, have been okay if there was like a, 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 sh a strict razor commercial, like about toxic femininity? Would that have been okay with you? Can you tell me what you think toxic, toxic femininity is? Accusing men of things that never happen and yeah. calling it sexual like assault? Like Brett Kavanaugh? Yeah. He is an awful man and a rapist. <laughs> Wait, he's a what? He's, he's an honorable an awful man. man. An o awful man. Honorable. I said awful. Prove it. What? He he. he yeah, facts. Name one fact of anything awful he's ever done. He raped someone because mean, she because she said so. Yeah, yeah, wait, wait, hold on. Evidence. Because she said that so. That wasn't even that wasn't even a trial in a court. It was in front of a. So why isn't there a trial in the court? Why no. didn't she go file it? Why didn't she file a police report? Because she there was no the evidence. Date, time, place, no witnesses. We have this this toxic culture where women are the same culture okay. these people like Jussie Smollett then faking a hoax because you know you have to Bingo. be a victim you or, don't know you can't you can't then sit here and say that without facts that you can say he's a rapist but then Jussie Smollett can get away with saying there was people shouting this is Trump country we're going to beat you up without facts you either have facts of both or you can't just leave them to do that okay, because can I he ask wants you, to start a race war. Can I, just, I want to ask you a last question. Each other. I may ask you a question. Do you think, so now we're getting, I, now this is why I don't support feminism, by the way. You, so you, do you believe in the concept that women should just be believed absent facts? Because that, that was the Christine Blasey Ford thing. There was not a single fact. Do you think that women should be believed absent facts if they say that they were raped and assaulted? Not without fact, but I think there should be a culture of belief if someone comes forward and says, a man or a woman mm -hmm. comes forward and says something has happened to them, that they should be given the time to, to be heard and to, she to was speak heard. of their she experience. Okay, but I, I just want to... Not by a court, not by a judge, not by legal then Why didn't she submit a police report? Time. She, she still has Because there is a culture of disbelief because she was in an But she had no position. evidence. There's no statute of limitations for rape in Maryland. She could file a police report today. It's because she made up the entire thing. No, she didn't. What, there, so why doesn't she know the time, the place, no corroborating witnesses? Her story changed eight times. None of her friends said it ever happened or she ever talked about it once before. Everything about her life story changed at least six times. And, and two of the women that came forward and said that something happened are actually under criminal conviction for making up the entire thing they ever met her once before. This was a con job to try to displace United States Supreme Court It was Court a political justice. hit job, it really was. But I do want to say this to you, and something for you to just consider, because I think we should wrap this up, because I, I don't think you're ever going to not be a feminist, and I'm never going to be one, right? Um, but it's really important, when you start getting into that slippery slope of believe women, and I talk about this particularly to minority America, because we've learned our lesson the hardest with this, and I think radicalized feminism, when I did a, um, an interview, I said it was the closest thing to white supremacy I've ever seen is radicalized feminism. The concept of just believing a woman because she said something is the direct thing that led to all of our ancestors getting lynched in America. When white women would just say that something happened, okay, and, and we were supposed to magically believe it. Our ancestors were then chased after, put into cars, Emmett Till, everything that happened in America happened because white women should just be believed. So you will never, ever, ever hear me stand behind a radicalized concept like just believe women because they're crying. Thank you so much for taking the time to speak to Thank us you. today. Thank you. Would you like to? You know, there's a lot of talk about the so-called patriarchal society and the demonization of masculinity today. But let's take a step back and look at the facts. Like Charlie said, men and women are supposed to support each other especially when raising kids. We've all seen the stats on fatherless homes. Kids need good fathers. It's a fact. Masculinity isn't toxic. The absence of healthy masculinity is what's truly toxic. What we're seeing today is this push to feminize young boys, to strip them of the natural traits that help them grow into strong, responsible men. These boys often don't have a male role model, no father to guide them, and in schools. They're constantly told to stop, acting like boys, to be softer, more compliant, more like women. The problem is, those same masculine traits that some criticize are also the ones that drive men to do incredible things, protect their families, take risks, build societies, and even run into burning buildings as firefighters. Yes, sometimes, those traits can lead to reckless behavior in men who haven't been taught how to harness them properly. But that's because of weak men, not strong ones. And here's the truth. I don't know a single woman who actually wants a man in her life who can't provide or protect. It's part of what makes a strong partnership work. But then you hear these feminist talking points about living in a patriarchal society. And I wonder, where are they getting this from? It's like there's a script they all read from. If we actually look at the data, men aren't sitting at the top of some golden hierarchy. Men have the highest rates of suicide. They make up 70% of the homeless population. 
75% of murder victims, 93% of the prison population, and 92% of work-related deaths. Men face harsher punishments for the same crimes as women. And let's not even get started on the bias in divorce and paternity courts, which overwhelmingly favor women. Men are more likely to work in dangerous jobs, in harsh weather conditions, and they tend to work longer hours. So in what way are we really living at a patriarchal society? And yet, many feminists seem to overlook the fact that the freedoms they enjoy today, including voting, education, and work opportunities, were made possible because men supported those changes. Look at the inventions that have made life easier for everyone. Dishwashers, refrigerators, sanitary products, all created by men, and they've significantly benefited women. At the end of the day, men and women complement each other. We each bring different strengths to the table. And that's how we build strong families and strong societies. The real problem is this constant push to pit us against each other, instead of recognizing that we're supposed to work together. I like it. It's ironic. I think it's pretty funny. But um, so you're very um, against kind of you're very like you're not a huge fan of socialism. I'm kind of getting that vibe. So what is I want I've got two questions. What is uh, in America like what is your vision? What is your perfect idea of healthcare? Because in the UK we very much like our socialized healthcare. Like you know even you guys want to keep it. So like uh, what is your vision for perfect healthcare in your so in your like Mad Max kind of small government world like what? Mad Max yeah, yeah okay. that's what it feels like kind of mm -hmm. like a wasteland like no government you know I know it's not like that at all you but ever, you, you, ever, know. you ever heard of LASIK eye surgery before yeah so well, how's LASIK eye surgery regulated in the states I'm not sure how is it in the it? Mad Max world tell me <laughs> well in the Mad Max world that yeah. you're trying to fear monger um yeah it's not covered by insurance I know it's not true but it's just like so it's in, it's in the private market <laughs> so I would like I'd like the U.S. healthcare system to work how the LASIK eye surgery industry has worked over the last 10 years where it's a vital organ, not covered by insurance, not covered by government hospitals, not covered by Medicaid, and not covered by Medicare, where it's a cash-only transaction. So over the last 10 years, the most amazing medical advancements around LASIK eye technology have stemmed from America, and the price has gone down dramatically. So it used to be $20,000 per eye, now you can get it $750 per eye. It used to be a three-week recovery time, now it's a 48-hour recovery time. It's a vital organ, so there's no, the arguments that somehow this is not necessary, there's not a high level of precision, gets completely and totally dismissed. The market works no matter where it is, whether it be in healthcare, food, transportation, housing, technology, communication. So I want more market forces. I want health healthcare to be bought across state lines in the states. I want a government that does not pick crony favors of hospitals that make big contributions or drug companies that have the right lobbyists or trial lawyers that have proximity to Capitol Hill. The market works no matter where it is tried in the states. It's a totally screwed up system because it's half cronyist, half government run, and it's, um, it's, there are some really good parts of the U.S. healthcare system if you can afford it. We have the best treatment if you can afford it. You roll your eyes, how do you get things to, for more people to afford things? Through competition. We do not have that in the U.S. healthcare. So we solve half the equation. Half the equation is quality. The rest of the world benefits from the U.S. medical advancements every single year, whether it be, whether it be heart monitor machines, whether it be pharmaceutical breakthroughs. Ninety percent of the most instrumental and important Drugs that are used in this country around the world stem from billions of dollars of research and development incentives that are put in the United States of America. So the rest of the world benefits from the U.S. healthcare industry, whether you like it or not. Now, the problem is how do you get more people the access to higher quality of care? Well, the law of markets that we've learned over the last 200 years and we've seen and we've all experienced, whether it be how airplanes and cars and technology and phones used to be tools of the rich and now they're things that we all enjoy for a low price and a high level accessibility, is competition. Capitalism does three things really, really quickly. It lowers prices, raises the quality of good, and allows more people accessibility to those things. Healthcare should be no different, and that's what I like to see in the States. We don't have it, so just so you know. I think at your core you're trying to say we have socialized medicine and it works and what you guys have overseas doesn't work. We don't have free market health care system in America, so that's why it's an absolute disaster. You want to follow up really yeah. quick? Or? I just have one more thing. Um, so first of all, that was, that was interesting. I've learned something. But I'm um, just out of interest. So in your world of like small government, I think there's off the top of my head, I can think of two socialized institutions in America. I've got the postal system and I've got libraries. Would you want to keep libraries so, in so, your... So it, just, you know, the postal system yeah. is the Disaster. biggest joke. Disaster. Yeah, yeah. if, if you make yeah, a joke about inefficiency, late mail, yeah. things that are misplaced, it is the U.S. postal system. Right. So yeah. I would love to privatize the United States postal system because, and we have other companies. We have three companies actually compete for parcel delivery service, yeah, yeah. DHL, yeah. UPS, and FedEx. Yeah. Uh, and FedEx is headquartered out of Memphis, Tennessee, and does more tons of air cargo <laughs> freight in the world than any other company because it's privatized, and they do it less per parcel. So privatize the postal service. 
so libraries are local government, not federal government. The Postal Service is subsidized by the federal government ineffectively. Libraries, it's, it's up to the local government. I think there's a role for libraries. I think they're becoming increasingly outdated. Whoa, 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 whoa. Well, You're saying like books for everyone? Shouldn't you have personal responsibility well, to have again, your own if it's a, books? If it's a local, if it's a local tax, a bit of a and, and if you don't want to live in a town with a library, don't move to that town. That's, that's what's amazing about local government, is you have the ability and the mobility to move to a place that might represent your values, your interests, your needs, or wants more than others. And so if you, want, if you want a place that has a higher police force or better schools, you move there. And that's, the, that's, that's what the founders talked about as laboratories of democracy, as Louis Brandeis talked about, the U.S. Supreme Court justice from the 60s and 70s. So we have these competing different markets of democracy. The best ideas will win. All right, cool. Interesting. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Let's talk about this for a second. First off, this young lady brings up socialism and tries to compare it to places like the UK or Canada with their socialized healthcare systems. But let's be real. Those aren't socialist countries, not even close. Show me a socialist country that actually works. Look at Argentina. People are fleeing to neighboring countries, and those countries weren't even that great to begin with. So, setting aside her comments on socialism, let's talk about what really matters the healthcare system. The American healthcare system? It's broken. No question about it. But let's not kid ourselves. The NHS in the UK, the Canadian system, they've got serious issues too. Sure, countries like Canada have a socialized healthcare system. But the wait times nowadays are insane. It didn't always used to be like that. But at least people there aren't going bankrupt because they get cancer or have a major injury. Both systems, whether it's the NHS Canada's, or even our own here in the U.S., they're all bowed down by greed. The cost of medicine needs to come down, period. The average American shouldn't have to stress about going to the doctor because it might mean thousands in medical bills, I mean. Most Americans right now couldn't even scrape together thousand dollars in an emergency. It's a broken system. Here's a real-world example. My wife is Thai, and we run a business in Thailand, so we spend a lot of time there, I meet so many expats, veterans, retirees on fixed incomes, who can't afford their medical bills in the U.S., so they move to countries like Vietnam, Thailand, or the Philippines, where they can live a decent life and actually afford their medicine. People even do the same in parts of South America. And this isn't some underground black market stuff we're talking about. We're talking about legit medicine from companies like Pfizer, the same insulin, the same antibiotics you get in America, but at a fraction of the cost in Thailand, you can walk into a pharmacy, get your insulin for the month, and pay about 10 bucks. In the U.S., even at the lowest price, it's still 30 or 40 bucks for the same thing, still way too much. This isn't just about insulin either, it's all medicines across the board, the system is broken, and while I'm not claiming to have all the answers, something has got to change. Healthcare costs are one of the leading causes of bankruptcy in this country. People shouldn't have to choose between going bankrupt or getting the medical care they need. Look, socialism isn't the answer, but we absolutely have to figure out how to make medicine and medical care more affordable for the average American. It's that simple, all right? Let's get back to it. Hello. <laughs> Hello. Um, yeah, thank you for coming to the UK. Um, my, there's been a lot of talk about victim mentality, and I just wanted to um, bring up, you know, the, the re a real victim group. And I know, Candice, I've heard you talk about it a lot in terms of the unborn children and the genocide that's happening through abortion. So my question actually is to the Turning Point UK. Um, where do you stand on the issue of abortion? Is this something that you're going to be uh, addressing? Um, I don't think it's something we're going to be addressing as a campaign group, but I think because it's kind of, like I said, a personal thing. In the UK, I feel we've come to a compromise in the sense that we have a system where, I mean, whether we like it or not, abortions do happen, unfortunately. If I could do something to go back to, the, to give people another option so that abortions wouldn't happen in the first place, that would be the ideal. But we live in the real world. Abortions would happen and they'd happen back street um, if they weren't happening to the government. I think there's a debate to be had about the time limits and people to think about that, but it wouldn't be an issue that Turning Point UK is going to be you know, campaigning or lobbying on. And I think where abortion is concerned, although I, I do, um, I'm not personally against abortion, I am against the uh, late term limits and also the fact that black women are actually most likely to have repeat abortions in the UK. I'm not, that's not really a good thing for me 
Um, however, you know, abortion, like Joel said, is kind of a settled topic in the UK. So that's not really something we'll be focusing on as much. Okay. Um, but, you know, this is an issue where babies, <laughs> human beings, are literally being killed, slaughtered, and um, shouldn't that be something that, if we talk about personal responsibility, right. we're talking about I'll, I'll, I'll jump caring in on for this our little families. Bit. So here's what I'll say. So Turning Point is an organization, and we focus on these things, free markets, limited government, personal responsibility is a big one, obviously. Um, I've sort of, I've, I've grown as an individual, and the more that you get further into it, you develop as, as an individual outside of an organization, your viewpoints. Um, abortion is a huge thing. I think it's murder. Um, and the problem with abortion isn't the fact, uh, is beyond the fact that it's murder, is the fact that people are being miseducated about it. I think that people would make different decisions if they were being properly yeah if they were feminism being, yes if they were being properly taught about what abortion is like I don't know if any of you guys watched footage from our CPAC our, our big uh, our CPAC conference that we just had in DC go watch dr. Ben Carson describe to you as a doctor what happens during the process of abortion that should not have happened on a CPAC stage that should happen in every single health class that you are you are forced to take throughout the public school system okay when I learned about abortion and in school, I learned about it like it was like deciding whether or not you wanted to wear brown boots or black boots for the day. And that's what's wrong. Our education system is, is, is training women to disassociate it as thinking of it as a living human being, as if it's just an option. And I, I think it's disgusting and that we need to entirely revamp the education system. I'm fiercely passionate about it. Um, and it does disproportionately affect black women. Um, and, and there's a reason for that because it's targeted in our education systems, in, our na in, in black neighborhoods. The ads are all over the adverts you see. You, uh, there are these big, um, what are they called? Uh, no, the uh, big uh, billboards. billboards that literally will show black women smiling, saying, like, I just made a choice, like, as if it was whether or not they should go out on a Thursday night. Um, that is a major problem with, that I have, and I think that the abortion rate would significantly decrease if people actually learned what abortion was, and abortion is, in fact, murder. And um, it's an issue for men as well. This same thing has been framed as if it's an issue just for women. But I think we need to hear more men speaking about it as well. That's correct. And um, yeah, uh, education. Yes. So I, think, I think in the UK we're all more for like honest debate and discussing and putting more of the ideas of personal responsibility, but in specifically kind of, you know, campaign against that's That's why we're saying I, for actually more people took on those values of personal responsibility and the education around it, mm. then maybe we'd see abortions start to decrease in the country. As, as so, a group, um, we sorry, um, CBR UK, um, we, we're also showing the reality of abortion. So we actually go to... Um, um, universities, Oxford, Cambridge, and we've seen like Oxford and Cambridge students, we go with big banners, we show the reality of abortion, we show graphic images to show the truth right. and educate people. And we've seen, you know, Oxford students, which are meant to be, you know, the smartest in the world, literally come and cover up our images and they have no arguments. They, they go crazy. Right. Well, I, would continue, I would just encourage you to keep pushing and you know it's like I said it's not like the, it's not what we do per se at Turning Point USA but as individuals and as women we should always be speaking up about it and having an authentic conversation and, and super quick I'm pro-life here are two thought exercises for anyone in this room that might be undecided or pro-choice really quick um, if it's not a life why do we call a celebration of a pregnancy a baby shower not a fetus shower the second thing that in the states at least when a pregnant woman is brutally murdered that actually counts as a double homicide not as a single homicide I'm guessing it's the same here in the UK um, but if that very same woman instead of getting brutally murdered decided to go to a family planning clinic or an abortion clinic and decided to have an abortion that's perfectly fine the life a life should not have objective a subjective value based simply on what an, another person wants to do with it mm -hmm. the rights do not go away just because a single individual wants to do something or terminate that fetus or baby or whatever it is. Um, and so those are some things to think about. If I could just say one final thing, sorry. Um, yeah, I, I would encourage um, Turning Point UK. I think we can learn a lot from our US brothers and sisters in, in this and the Americans who speak about this issue a lot more than us. And I think as Brits, we shouldn't be, sometimes we can be more- Too you know, reserved. Yeah, too reserved to, about, to have real conversations. Because it's too controversial. Yeah. There's off topic things and abortion is one of them. Right. You know, so I, I just, noticed I that. hope, I'd love to connect with you guys afterwards. I Thank love what you. you're doing anyway, so. Thank you so much. Thank Thank I really appreciate Thank that. You so much. Thank you. Hello. You know, props to this lady for speaking up about being pro-abortion. We need more women talking about this, because let's face it, women listen to women more when it comes to these issues. When men speak up, it often gets twisted into, who are you to tell a woman what to do with her body? But this isn't about controlling bodies. It's about responsibility. Look, 
I'm all about taking responsibility for your actions. If you're sexually active, you have to accept the consequences. And yes, I'm talking to men too. Use protection and make smart choices. Or you'll be on the hook for 18 years of child support. Courts don't favor men, so it's up to you to be careful. Women have plenty of options for contraception. Use them. Don't sleep with someone you wouldn't want to have a child with, because accidents happen. The way pro-abortion advocates talk about clumps of cells or fetuses dehumanizes what's really going on. It's still a life. We see the inconsistency. If a pregnant woman is harmed, it's two lives lost. But abortion is seen differently. That doesn't make sense. At the end of the day, this is about valuing life. I love humanity and want the best for everyone, born or unborn. This is a conversation that needs to happen more often, and I'm passionate about getting the word out there. Let's get back to the video. Uh, yeah, my question is just, uh, I looked at some data while you were speaking about the uh, gender pay gap in the UK and the US. So apparently it's 17% in the UK and 19% in, in the US. No, it's not. And uh, it's WEF data, so yeah. I just it, looked it at that one. So maybe, the maybe the World Economic Forum in 2015, right. uh, in so percentage. Ha happy to talk no, no. about this. Uh, like, yeah, yeah, this so is my like, question is basically, yeah. what do you think are the causes of this? It, it yeah. doesn't exist. Well, do no, it, uh, there is a cause for it. I'll tell you what it is. And do you think there should be public measures to tackle it? And yeah, the causes and the public Fair reaction. Fair question. So I, get it, I get it all the time because obviously I'm like the anti-feminist. So people are always like, how can you deny the gender, uh, the, the wage gap? Okay. Um, so uh, when I went to university, all of the girls that I was friends with were majoring in fashion and textiles and merchandising. Um, and they all went off to intern at Vogue. Um, and pick out Prada bags that maybe Kate Moss would wear on the cover of something. Um, the average pay for that, if you want to be in fashion when you get out of school, is $20,000. Men were majoring in business and engineering and, and things that when you get out of school, you get paid more. If our interests, if we're going to go in and we're not going to be taking serious majors, and we are just, we're shocked when we find out the world doesn't need, need more people to pick out Prada bags for Kate Moss's shoot, I mean, that's not a gender, that's not a gender wage gap, that's an interest gap, right? And, and that's what's happening happening. Also, women, we, we have different interests. Women aspire to get married, they aspire to have children. They leave, the, they, they leave the workforce earlier. Every single one of my girlfriends, I'm not, what I'm saying is that a person that is a brain surgeon should not get paid the same amount as a person that wants to pick out Prada bags for the rest of her life. I mean, this is what's going on in America. When you look at the, that the, of the wage gap, they're not telling you what the jobs actually are and what women are going into in terms of their majors in university. When you're taking feminist dance class 101, you're not going to make six figures when you go out of university. That's just the truth. And women, if there was a real feminist woman, a movement would talk about that, would say, hey, if you want to make as much as men, maybe we should be majoring in engineering and things like that. But we don't because we have different interests, which is fine. But you then can't complain and think that we should now have a society that forces, what are we going to do? Are we going to have like a government that says now we have to pay women that want to go into fashion six figures to make them feel good and like they're doing things that are productive in society? Like we, that's, not, that's not a practical solution. If we want to get serious, if women want to make more than men, they do. It's actually been proven statistically so, in America that when they go into the same majors and take on the same jobs, women get paid more than men in those particular fields. So I'll, for Google, for example, I'm going to comment on this in a variety of different ways. Google, for example, did a pay equity audit uh, two weeks ago. <laughs> that was last week. And uh, Google said we must go after uh, gender-based wage discrimination. Turns out that uh, men were being significantly underpaid at Google, so they dished out $9 million in bonuses to men at Google because women were being overpaid. Uh, a couple things. First of all, if you just lazily, as the, some of the studies that you referenced, not you're being lazy, but the studies are lazy, extrapolate all the women and all the men at a certain age and don't take into account job, ex how long they've been in a job, what they studied, their experience prior, the gender wage gap in the states does exist. But if you take in women that study the same stuff as men and are in the workforce at the same time as men, they actually earn 106 cents of, of the dollar more, meaning six cents more than a man does in the states. Candace made a brilliant point. In the states, if you look at the five majors that are the highest performing, performing majors, and the five majors that are five lowest performing majors. So roughly the five highest performing majors in the United States of America, petroleum engineering, business, finance, things of that nature, they're 80 to 90 percent more or less dominated by men. There's only one major that are dominated by women, a, a, a single uh, out, of the, out of the five. If you look at the five worst performing, pre-K pre, pre uh, education, things of that nature, elementary school education, um, almost 80 to 90 percent dominated by women because they naturally will make different choices because they're, they're biologically different. We're set just up biologically different. different. Couple, couple, really quick, women are also... Can I just go back on that? 
because I, I find it's a very interesting point you're making, the interest and the biologically... Yeah, it's backed making, up by a and, Cambridge and, and study. Can, can you just elaborate on this? Because the, uh, I, w I would tend to disagree about the biologically part of the... There's for instance, woman, you, say woman, you say the gender gap doesn't exist and that woman would be more inclined to do a fashion sure. degree well, no, rather I, than a business yeah, degree. Well, and women, are, uh, women and men are different, and yes. I, I'm going to say some things that you probably hate, uh, an expression you hate, but social construct. Well, and no, no we have evidence to this, though. Look at the Scandinavian countries. They tried to get rid of this. They actually allowed teenagers to choose which do you want to get into STEM fields or not. And the data actually showed that women naturally wanted to go towards, when they tried to make this, the society totally equitable and they tried to get rid of these gender roles, women still, because of the biological predisposition towards nurturing, women... We, are, we naturally want to nurture. We, they go to there nursing. Are studies, there are definitely studies against that nurturing part. Women are not more inclined to yeah, be not ring. 110 percent we are 100 I mean, Sweden is the example of it you're just wrong it's just true it's just but, true but based on what what studies is a, it true there was, based on what? there was a study done by Cambridge scientists that demonstrated that men naturally revert to environments that require more structure such as politics and the professions that he mentioned and, and women's and women naturally revert to professions such as teaching which require more empathy and emotion this is just a natural thing it's important it's not to it's yeah it's important not to say that you know women should be forced into those roles but you do have to accept you know that we naturally that do we naturally men and women. revert to them it's just true. I've, I'm, I'm, just, I'm just telling you, like, even if you've said, I'm telling you every single woman that I went to university with versus every single man, there's just a difference in terms of the majors that we're picking. And we're not forced to pick uh, certain majors. We just aren't forced to. So what you're seeing is, the, is the, the result of people picking their different interests, right? And unfortunately, the other part of your question was, should we do something in society to even it out? We don't have to do anything in society to even it out. You, you, we, can I, can you, I ask you, a question? More, 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 yes, yes, of course. Yeah. Do you think there's a biological difference between a man and a woman? I do believe, indeed, there's a okay. biological difference between man and woman. But when it comes to interests, I do more believe that... So let me ask you a follow-up. Mm -hmm. Don't mean to you know, interrupt uh, rudely. But if we have biological differences, do I have more adrenaline? Do I have more testosterone than she does? I think, yes, indeed. Do you, you think might that testosterone, have more testosterone could drive you to do different interests and things? Well, I could indeed do believe oh. that. Yeah. The thing is... So maybe a man might be more likely to do a weightlifter, serve in the army, be a police officer, a firefighter, and a woman who has more estrogen might want to be a nurturer, a preschool teacher. Do you see well, how biology... Uh, I, I have another question. Do you think it's desirable for the society, this, this kind of... Of course. This? I love of it, course. yeah. Absolutely. I, I love the yin and the yang. I think men and women are symbiotic. It's beautiful. It's biblical. And it's something that we should stop trying to actively work to force and destroy at, at a certain point. I love it. And I did a, I did a, I John, I, I did a, po a podcast, I was interviewing John Voigt, who you guys might know, he's, he's Angelina Jolie's father, and he was talking about this, this like biblical, beautiful thing that our society is currently trying to destroy, and he said, the, the thing that I see over and over again in my life, and it's nice, because he's, he's 80 years old now, so they have that wisdom when they get old, and he said, women just know what to do when they have children. He's like, they just know, it's, it's so innate, when you see a woman with a child, it's the most beautiful thing, he goes, exactly. you get men around there, they don't know what they're doing, and every single one of my, of my girlfriends that now has children says the same thing that it's easier when the man just leaves the house because it's like they have another child right and and that's and that's beautiful right and, and and feminists make you think that there's something wrong with that like he make him do this and do that and it's like yes th there are certain things that we innately know how to do and when i see a child i instantly know how to take care of them that's just something that's innate and it's biological and maybe i don't have the data and the facts to describe to you that i can prove that this is a thing but it is it just is a thing and i don't know why society wants to destroy that or, or, or force it in a different way and make men the people that are innate and know what to do when they see children. There's something really beautiful and spiritual about that that should never be disrupted. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, just, let's end with a disagreement. The gender pay gap, really? My guy was still in... The gender pay gap, really? We're still talking about this? As Candace said, men and women choose different paths in life. Men tend to work longer hours and choose higher paying fields like STEM, science, technology, engineering, and mathematics, while women often excel in areas like medicine, psychology, and law. When I was younger, I worked on oil rigs to put myself through school physically demanding, long hours, outdoors, not a single woman in sight, and certainly no feminist is fighting for equality in those tough jobs. Men are more likely to work in dangerous environments, and, frankly, 
die at work. The idea of a significant gender pay gap for the same job doesn't hold up. Someone did the math, if anything. It's pennies on the dollar. And get this. Asian women are actually the highest paid demographic in America, even out-earning white men. So if there's really a pay gap, how do you explain that? All right, let's get back to it. Um, hello. Um, sorry if I'm not as articulate as I could be. Um, it's weird to see you guys in person. Um, I am kind of interested in the wordplay, specifically Charlie, because I've seen the most of you online, uh, but also Candice, but I'm afraid I have, I have nothing to, like, ask, but specifically Charlie. Um, a lot of you, the wordplay you use um, and a lot of the sources that you draw on, like the statistics, you're very good at just like ramping off statistics and throwing them into the person that you're arguing. Um, I was wondering, where do you collect your sources? Uh, and do you make them easily accessible? Of course. Uh, Would you like to name an example that I can cite for you now? Um, I don't question that the things that you're saying are factual. It's more how they are phrased and how they are put to us. So, for example, the thing that you've just said now about abortion. Mm -hmm. Could you quickly remind me so I don't trip over my sure, own Sure, I'll do the first one. I say, a celebration of a pregnancy, why do we call that event a baby shower, not a fetus shower? Right. So, that in itself sounds like, oh, right, well, that means there's a cultural acceptance of the idea that it's a, a baby pre-birth. But that's just a linguistic cultural way. So I call it, I'm pro-choice, for example, but I would still call it a baby shower. That doesn't mean I culturally accept the idea that it's a baby pre-birth. So I'm let's just play. using a linguistic there's standard. Meaning. There's deeper meaning, though. Let's play this out. It's fun. Um, so if the individual that has the baby shower decides right after the baby shower to have an abortion, what is that inside of her called? I don't want to do this, if that's all right. I don't want to do no, abortion. I know, but you see all of a sudden but your can argument I, Can I use a different up? example if abortion is kicking up too much dust? Say that again. Can I, can I use a different example sure, of a fact? Fine, okay, so uh, the first thing I saw with you in was your political debate with Hassan. Yeah. Um, that was the first thing I saw of you. Um, and you said, uh, you'll probably still remember it, but it was that uh, the, the worst 10 cities in America were run by Democrats. Democrats. Yeah, the poorest, most murderous. Yeah. Right, so I looked it up mm -hmm. because I wanted to read up on it, and there wasn't a source in the video mirror I'd seen. And that was... Correct, but it was also correct that of the top 10 cities, most of them were Democrat, and across the board, on average, most cities are Democrat. So the fact that you took it out of the entirety of the fact, which is that most cities are Democrat, the top best cities are Democrat, and the worst cities are Democrat, and you chose to only say that the worst well, cities are Democrat. The top best cities are Democrat? Well, so he means uh, the most prosperous, he means the wealthiest. In the but, same way that, yeah. So but, the, city, the study that I found that mirrored your statistic said that. So, uh, so cities tend to be more, urban areas tend to be more to the left, just as they are, but when Republican mayors are actually allowed the chance to govern, the results are remarkable. Um, and so let's juxtapose cities versus states, or even in the, if you want to extra extrapolate what my argument was really talking about. In the laboratory of democracy theory, which we all believe in, which is when certain states are allowed to have juxta juxtaposed policies and contrast against each other, you see huge differences. So the most prosperous, most job-creating, most entrepreneurial states are ones with Republican governors and low-tax, low-regulation type policies. And there is a correlation between the most murderous, the most dangerous, and the most, um, honestly, hopeless areas, and Candace grew up in one of them, are most always dominated by Democrats. But when those Republican policies are actually allowed to be instituted, those communities turn around quite quickly. So. Uh, and another one was that you said, I think it was the life expectancy in Cuba mm -hmm. was 15 years lower than that in the United States. Yeah, if the government doesn't kill you, right. Right, democide. But um, I, I looked it up as well, and I found there was no information on that. And in fact, the, the Google definition, which draws on, uh, it cites you know, many different studies, and it fills it all in and it pulls it all together, um, and it chooses the most reasonable response that's backed up by facts and logic. Uh, <laughs> um, it said that it was actually a year older than the US. So I just, so how, how do you, especially point. when you're, like, I think it's called gall galloping, when you're throwing so many points in a debate, do you not think it's unfair and unreasonable and maybe at points even manipulative to be phrasing things in a certain way that might be when beyond scrutiny, it's like me who had to Google all of these statistics, which pan out to be not as obtrusive and anti-left as, as, as you say they are, do you not think that's at, at, the, at the worst incompetent, and at, at the best incompetent and at the worst malicious? So you're, enti you're entitled to your own opinion, not entitled to your own facts. 
let's talk about the Cuban one. I reject the own Cuban government's health statistics completely and totally. Um, I don't believe the socialist governments of Cuba's health statistics that they submit to the World Health Organization or the United Nations because objective independent analysis of their own health standards are nearly 20 to 30 years behind life expectancy that their own government produces. So what you're looking at is corroborated by people that want it to be true. And we can have, we can have a 30 minute discussion over whether you believe the Cuban health statistics, but the answer is show me another statistic of anything I've talked about in the 300 hours that Candace and I have done you know, public speaking. Everything I talk about, everything I do, is rooted in years of research and backing and data, and I'm happy to talk about each specific one. I don't want to monopolize the time here, um, but I reject the premise and the insinuation that somehow I'm being reckless um, because facts are not reckless. In fact, it's the basis of why we're here and why what we believe. Uh, you, you successfully pivoted away from the intention of my question, which wasn't the factual nature of the statements you were saying. It's right. the way so, that you phrased them. So I phrased them effectively, and that, I, that should be a problem? No, it's not about effectively as defined by you, as in it promotes well, you your even agenda. Said so that they, you you, you I, pivoted I, quickly I away from the I abortion thought, thing. Can I please finish my... Huh? Happy to. Yeah. Uh, I pivoted away from the abortion thing, not because I didn't want to talk about it, but because it made me uncomfortable to do so. Um, do, you think I did a, do you think it's effective the way I worded it, because maybe it made you think a way you never had to think before? The point is, like, I could do this for every. I could do that for every uh, issue. It's more that so you say like, oh, we shouldn't trust the Cuban health statistics because they've Correct. got an agenda to promote, and that probably makes a lot of sense. But similarly, there are people who, whose prime objective, uh, as if they're still stuck in McCarthyism, is to obliterate any form of socialism and communism as a, as an uh, as an opposition to free market capitalism. And so, mm -hmm. similarly, in the same way that we shouldn't trust the authorities in Cuba. Uh, just, okay, so I just, yeah, okay. if, this is, if at the root of this is capitalism versus socialism, is there an example where socialism has, is really thriving and worked as a concept? Like, this is what I don't understand. It's, it's weird to me when people come up to this discussion and it's like, the, at your core, you're just what, defending socialism? Defending Cuba? Defending, what, what are you defending? That's not the, the, the root of my question. I get what you're saying is, is he phrasing things in a way that maybe aren't fair because you could find something on the internet that maybe supports communism and socialism. That's, that's essentially what you're saying, right? No, you're mischaracterizing me, actually. Okay, how am I mischaracterizing um, you? You're mischaracterizing me because you've generalized what I'm saying, which is that I've looked into talking points that Charlie's raised. I right. found the exact can you, uh, that I found the exact studies that he's referenced and know that they do because they actually mirror the things that he's, he's said verbatim. So they're cited. And I, huh? so, so I do use studies, is what you're saying. I, I never said you didn't, well, Charlie. I know, so I, I'm, I, I'm not sure where you're coming well, from. I, I'm, that's why I'm you, saying do, I'm do actually I'm, I'm not mischaracterizing you. You're, I, I get what you're saying. You're saying, Charlie, he's saying that you say facts, but there are also al alternative facts that would maybe present socialism and communism in a better way. You're saying it's unfair because of the way he's saying them, not because of... Because what, from what I'm getting, is you're saying well, that he's... Well, that's called a debate. Yeah, essentially what you're saying is he's too good at presenting his argument. Bec no, no, because you're saying... No, let me finish, let me finish. You've just said, he, you went and looked over the things that Charlie said, you found them to be backed by studies, which would mean they were factual. So he's not lying, he's not mischaracterizing or using, fat, or using wrong data. Let me finish, let me finish. You've been allowed to talk for a while now. And then, but the way he presents him in an argument when you say he's galloping may maybe make his opponent afraid to talk. Or I, don't, I don't know what it does Basically to them. Wants However, to, to the argue bottom line is, the, yeah, the bottom line is you're saying Charlie's using facts. I don't get how that can be a disagreement, well, that Charlie the, uses facts in his arguments. You're saying that he's not presenting up, other facts like, that, would, that would defeat his debate. Yeah. So you're basically saying he should do also the job of Charlie Kirk and whoever's debating him, him which is just the same time. That's, what I'm, that's essentially what you're saying, is that Charlie should say, okay, you should look at a socialist country and say Venezuela people are killing their pets to eat food, etc. However, in this They're situation, well. they had really good weather and it was sunny, etc. I don't, I don't understand how you want him him as one side of the yeah give me i'm gonna finish and by the way I, another good use of this time would have been if you actually had the alternate facts, facts and just debated and just, charlie just said yes instead. <laughs> while you were here as opposed to debating the concept there's no point charlie having your own opposition without actually getting the facts yourself to come and debate rather than saying he uses facts too well yeah well, final point and i'll let my attorneys answer the rest of the question again you <laughs> again you've you've mischaracterized what i'm truly saying here which is that you're not trying to genuinely convince people. You're, you seem to be, from the presentation of the facts that I've given you as an example, phrasing truths in a very specific way and choosing to ignore things that present it on a more balanced, in a more balanced way to basically trick people, right? That's li no, 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 no. Please let me finish. 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 Can I finish? Please let me finish. They their opinions. Look. Fact. No, seriously. 
Hear me out, man. Facts Hear are unfair. Out. Facts, right? Facts don't care about your feelings, right? Facts are objective Amen. statehoods, right? But right. the way that you choose to present them, right? It's like saying if a statistic is 68%, you can't just rearrange the 68 to say 86, right? Hear me out, because that is just lying. I you could rearrange it to say 32, no? Please you could rearrange it to say 32 the other way around. Those are both factual statements. If you say 68%. No, I'm saying if you just, if, do I hear the mic? I can hear me. Um, <laughs> oh, sure. Um, the way that you're choosing to pr pr the way that you're choosing to talk about statistics, the things that you're choosing to neglect that present things in a more balanced way, indicates that your objective here isn't to convince people based on the whole truth, but in fact to play off of people's inability to quickly respond by asking for sources. Like if you provided a source, ah, oh, I'm struggling to articulate this, but it's just with the example I gave you about the Democrat cities, right? That's a pretty condemning. That's a pretty condemning statistic that the yeah. worst cities, to so, summarise, so, are mostly democratic. Yeah, but you I didn't present cool. the whole statistic, and that was a very purposeful choice. If you look up that study, Charlie's that is not the going to debate presented. himself. I don't under. This is very because confusing it's not to a me. game, Candice, is it? But no, it's but you just said when he goes on campuses and he debates with people that he's not presenting facts that are that would that would. What tried to destroy the fact that he just gave, like all, like this is that's the no, concept they're the of same the debate. Fact, Candace, I don't see what you're that's not understanding here. That's why it's called, here, but that's the what it's facts. called a debate. It's because it's not about it's the, the point of a debate. If you care about humanity, if you care about improving people's welfare, should be to prevent to be to present objective facts based on independent studies which and decide what the, which, which is what Charlie does, but <laughs> choosing to neglect. Choosing to neglect the entirety of the factual statement. Okay, I think this is right? now turning into like a Yelp review of Charlie Kirk, and I'm not, I'm not really getting. Because the point he's an of influential it. man, and he's and his practices, and all, everyone's it. practices need I get to be it, scrutinized. But I'm and yours are semantically. I wish you actually had. I wish you actually would just debate Charlie. That would I think would be more yeah, productive closing, for everybody here. I do here. appreciate you coming up and saying this. I will issue a challenge to the world. Anyone can come prepared with any hundreds of pages of documents to debate me, and I wish them well. Thank you. Another great talking point. A say event, even if it's an older one. Thanks so much for sticking around, guys. This video's a bit long, so if you're still here, I really appreciate it. Don't forget to hit the thumbs up and consider subscribing to the channel. Catch you in the next video. Peace out, everybody.